In this week's court report, the Pahrump man arrested after attacking a Nye County Sheriff's Office deputy, then leading police on a two-day manhunt, was sentenced to more time in jail today. Jeff Stevens, who was already behind bars for previous charges, was sentenced to an additional six months in county jail by Judge Kent Jasperson this morning. The sentence was handed down after Stevens' early morning arraignment, during which he pleaded guilty to violation of a protective order that was filed by Stevens' estranged wife, Teresa Incaparo. In addition to other crimes, Stevens also reportedly made threats at the thrift store his wife owns with a shotgun which was later found stashed in a grassy area near her store, reportedly in retaliation against her separating from him. Stevens was formally charged on March 7th with a repeated violation of order for protection against domestic violence, 14 counts, a misdemeanor. But today, all of those charges were dismissed but one. This morning, Judge Jasperson even said that Stevens continues to commit crimes even when he's in custody, referring to phone calls and other unlawful attempts to communicate with his wife. Back on January 20th, Stevens made a plea deal and accepted a sentence of 5 to 29 years in prison. The fiancé of a former deputy attorney general arrested on drug charges was in court today answering to her own allegations connected to the case. Jennifer Marsden appeared in both departments of justice court this morning regarding several narcotics cases. Marsden's fiancé, Timothy Treffinger, was arrested back in May 2015 after a month-long investigation regarding drug sales. When SWAT and other officers served a warrant at a residence at 5841 East Alfano Avenue, police found heroin and other paraphernalia inside. Treffinger and another man who were there were immediately arrested. Marsden was sought for questioning. Treffinger originally faced charges including maintaining a residence for the sale and use of drugs and possession of heroin and drug paraphernalia. However, Treffinger made a plea agreement pleading guilty only to possession of a controlled substance and was placed in the diversion program. During his sentencing back on January 11th, Marsden will have her case bound over to district court. Today, both the defense and prosecution agreed that Marsden will plead guilty to two Category C felonies, conspiracy to violate the Uniform Controlled Substance Act, and other charges against her will be dismissed later. Marsden's arraignment is scheduled for May 23rd. James Earl Marshall was arrested for criminal contempt on Friday, March 18th, the same day his sentencing hearing was scheduled in district court regarding charges of possession of child pornography. District court clerks say Marshall was remanded into custody on the 18th for that case to immediately serve 364 days with credit for time served of nine days and will be placed on five years probation and pay a fine of $2,500. Marshall was originally arrested for the charges back in March 2012, and in September 2015, he pleaded guilty as part of a plea agreement. James Earl is the brother of former Nye County Assistant Sheriff and former candidate for Sheriff Rick Marshall. This has been your Court Report. I'm Unette Gentry for News 46. The AYSO U10 team, the Pahrump United, are celebrating a victory that our town has never experienced. We caught up with this year's Western Regional Champions. The finalization to a three tournament series, um, the two games in Bullhead City, Arizona, win one, you go to the championship game, you lose it, you go to the third, fourth place game, and we won the first one and won the championship game. The first one, Hill, Hillsboro, California, right? Yes, ma'am. A small town outside of San Francisco. And then you won Downey to win the championship, right? Yes. Uh, that one was a tough one. The three to two in overtime. Yeah, because it was uh, going two to two. Tell me how tense that was for you. Two to two happened at the beginning of the third quarter. So we went almost a whole half of game without anybody scoring. Mm -hmm. And the closer you get to the end, you think one more goal, that's all it's going to take to win. And then they blew the whistle for the game to end. And then we had to just more stressfulness going into the last two five-minute halves. Is that something that you speak to the girls about is the stress? 
Uh, I try not to talk about stress. Uh, uh, us coaches were just telling them to have fun. They play better when they have fun. Mm -hmm. um, we had great attitudes. There was no attitude. Nobody was down at all the whole time, and I think that was a huge part of it. Nobody uh, got too overworked about how big the game actually was. What do you think um, was so competitive with the Downey team? They're uh, from L.A. A lot more people to choose from, a lot more uh, competition to make the team. They can take the best of their best that they have. They can cut girls. Um, they have uh, the, their talent pool is a lot bigger with, you know, their town is 150,000 people as opposed to our 40,000 people town. What do you think, um, or did you think at the beginning of the season that you had a championship team? I thought we had a great team. They, I got everybody that I wanted to. They're all, like I said before, older um, in this division. They've all played U10 before, and I thought we had a great chance. I never really expected to get this far, because uh, as far as I knew, Riverside was as far as you can go anyways. Um, tell me about the celebration afterwards. It they made a big deal about it. For that tournament, they brought out a stage. There was a speaker, a microphone. Um, they presented all the girls with their medal. Parents got to take pictures. Everybody there got to see us. We're the only town from Nevada in that whole tournament. So uh, the girls, um, of course, have finished now the season, and hopefully the, the rest of you know the ones that want to continue will be going on to the U12. What does it mean to be a champ to these girls right now? I think it's a great feeling. Like they're the first team to ever do that from prompt. They'll always have this, mm -hmm. no matter what they take from soccer. They'll always have this moment, this set of tournaments to back up whatever they need to go with. The Holiday Task Force is at it again. This Saturday, they're teaming up with Pahrump Disability Outreach Program, or PDOP, for their annual Easter picnic at Ian Dorch Memorial Park. We have our annual community Easter picnic, and that's going to be March 26th this year, which is coming up really fast. That is going to be held where? It's going to be at Ian Deutsch Memorial Park um, from 10 to 2 in the afternoon. And that's coinciding with the Easter egg hunt, right? Yes, from PDOP. And so PDOP's going to be put on the Easter egg hunt. I, um, what time does that start? Um, that goes on the whole day. Um, we do the Easter egg hunt a little bit different, mm -hmm. um, where all the different organizations that come out to give out information to parents and kids, mm -hmm. um, they will have Easter eggs. Mm -hmm. And so when you come and talk to them, you'll get an Easter egg, and there'll be some special Easter eggs yeah. that will have um, a special thing in them, a mm -hmm. uh, number or something, and then you can go and get a special gift. And so the Holiday Task Force is putting on this uh, this uh, picnic and so they're encouraging residents to bring their families come on down there's no cost right there's no cost to the community it's free of charge and we'll be having hot dogs and kettle corn and cotton candy and ice cream mm -hmm. and just a lot of fun we'll have animals and we'll have a train ride and a bounce house and we're also having a food drive and toiletry drive and so we're encouraging everybody to bring your pop top cans for our food ba uh, food pantries and toiletries to give out to our homeless all right and so people can come on down to Ian Deutsch Memorial Park what's the date again it'll be Saturday March 26th from 10 to 2. Is that the day before Easter? The day before Easter. All right, and so come on down, bring the kids down. Lots of fun. Are you looking for donations or volunteers? Um, we're looking for organizations to come out and uh, give information to our parents and our, our kids. So if they want to be part of this, they need to contact you? Yes, they can contact me at the Nye County Coalition. And um, my phone number is 727-9970, extension 236. All right, after the break, we'll have your entertainment this week.